Well, as Jubin said, my name is John Brockman. Um, I like things that are, are pretty easy and simple, and so I try and distilled everything um, into this talk to be described in two words. So uh, the title for this presentation is Two Words, and uh, hopefully you'll find the recurring theme funny. Um, as Jubin said, my name is John Brockman. I'm taking a year off of school to serve as the, the national president of the American Medical Student Association. And so I, I, before we start, I just want to, to thank Kaplan for, for webcasting this. It's, uh, it's allowing my family to be able to watch it back in Omaha, Nebraska. So I just want to say hi, Mom, uh, before we get started. Uh, as Jubin said, I, I grew up in, in Omaha, Nebraska. And from there, I did my undergrad at Truman State University in Kirksville, Missouri. And once I graduated from Truman State, I uh, went straight to med school uh, at Case Western in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. And then, as Jubin also said, I'm taking a break right now between my third and my fourth year to, uh, to work at the AMSA National Office, which is in Reston, Virginia. And after that, I'll be going back to med school, and I'll be applying, hopefully, to, to go and do urology. And so urology is a, a surgical subspecialty, and it focuses on uh, the general urinary tract, so kidneys, ureters, bladders, uh, things like that. So it's a little bit uh, nervous for me to, to speak in front of Dr. Britt here today. Um, this is a, a great picture from Dr. Seuss, and I think it kind of describes the, the pre-med journey a little bit, that you go in, you, you go in through the meat grinder of organic chemistry and physics and the MCAT and AMCAS, and then you get spit out on the other end, um, and you're, you're ready to go to med school. But I, I don't think it needs to be that way, and, and I hope you guys agree. Uh, this is a great quote, and I take it with me, and it's that every once in a great while, you'll have an opportunity that will affect the number and types of experiences you will have for the rest of your life. I'll say it again because I think it's important. Every once in a while, every once in a great while, you will have an opportunity that will affect the number and types of experiences you will have for the rest of your life. Two words here that are important. Number and types. It should be your goal to be trying to maximize the number and types of experiences that you'll have for the rest of your life. I think this conference is a, is a great start. Uh, Jubin has done fantastic work here, and the amount of knowledge that gets conveyed, hopefully you guys will find, will increase the number and types of your experiences. My AMSA journey began when I was eight, and it began with this quote. And this is in Latin. It's from uh, Virgil's Aeneid. And uh, he said it to his men. They were on a ship, and they were right about to mutiny. And when you take the English translation, it says, perhaps one day it shall be good to remember even these tragic events. Now, as I said, my AMSA journey, my medical school journey, really began when I was eight years old. And when I was eight, I came home from school on May 19th, 1993, and I found that my mom and my sister were crying and that there was a, a police car in the driveway. And as I walked into the door, uh, I found out that day that my father had passed away. And really that I find this tragic event to be really uh, the starting point for everything. And so after that, um, my, with my father unexpectedly passing away, um, my sister, my mother, and I became uninsured. And so when we talk about the 46 to 48 to 50 million uninsured, and the millions more that are underinsured in this country, it, it definitely has a, a personal meaning to me. And, and it means something more than just a number. However, just to, to sit back and say that this tragic event happened and to take nothing from it would be to miss the point of the story. Throughout my life, I've had great mentors and people advocating on behalf of me. And I think that that's important to take in mind. We're all going to have tragic events happen to us. There's very little that we can do about that. It's a part of life. However, it's challenges that are what make life interesting, and it's overcoming them what makes life meaningful. I don't think life would be much fun if it was all just joy and fun and puppy dogs and all of that. I think it's really the overcoming the obstacles which makes them meaningful. It's what makes medical school meaningful. It's not easy by any stretch of the imagination, but I think that's what makes it fun. Sometimes communication and patience are your only assets, but sometimes that's all you need. Again, two words here are important, communication and patience. I was on, my, was on my internal medicine rotation, and I was working at the VA, and a patient came in. His name was FL. And as he walked in, he was just sickly looking. Cachectic was just a textbook definition. He had the temporal wasting, and you could just tell that he wasn't well. Well, unfortunately, uh, we found out that he had lung cancer. But he was, he was in denial of his lung cancer, and quite frankly, uh, taking care of him, I was in denial too. 
Really, it was one of my first rotations. I didn't have the knowledge to be able to talk with him like that. Communication and patience were the only thing that I had. And so it was me trying over and over to tell him, you have cancer. I'm afraid you're not going to be able to leave the hospital. And it seemed like such a simple thing to be able to say, you probably won't leave the hospital. But it took two weeks to be able to say, sir, I don't think you're going to be able to leave the hospital. It was one thing to tell him, but it was another thing to have to call up his family on the phone and to be able to break them the bad news. Sure, you have standardized patients your first and second year that tell you about delivering the bad news, but to actually have to do it in real life, it's ridiculous. I mean, can you imagine me, 25 years old, a third year medical student, calling up a patient's family and telling them that their father was dying? It was, it was incredible to me. They ended up coming to the hospital, and it was one of the most uh, touching moments of third year. His entire family came, there were about 20 of them. They were spilling out into the hall and into the waiting room. And they came up to me and they said, doctor, doctor. And I said, I'm going to stop you guys right there. <laughs> By no means am I a doctor. I'm a third year med school student. And they said, you know what, we don't care. You're his doctor. You have the one that's been here with him for the past two weeks. You've been the one that sat on his bed every morning and talked to him. You were the one that called us. It doesn't matter because we know that there's nothing that you can do except just to be with him. And it was you talking with him that meant the most. Additionally, there was one thing that he wanted before he was about to die, and that was to see his wife. And his wife was, was in a nursing home. And to be able to get her out of the nursing home, he had to jump through all of the hoops. Now, did she end up getting out? Yes. Did it take any medical knowledge to do that? No, not really, just talking on the phone a lot. So what's the point of this? Communication and patience are oftentimes the only things that you have, but oftentimes they're the only things that you need. Use your words wisely. And second, have lots of patience. We can talk about it when it terms to patience. We can patience when you're talking about patience. You can talk about it on the medical school journey. You, you can uh, apply it in a lot of places. But I think that communication and patience are the two things that have gotten me to where I am today. Next, keep your humanity, have hobbies and interests. So I think that you know, whenever I hear uh, students coming to interview at Case Western, one of the most important things is, why do you want to go into medicine? And I think that that's the most important thing, and I think that's a great place to start. But the next thing is, how do all of your hobbies and interests and what you've done, how do they weave into that? If you say that you're interested in being an advocate, have you done advocacy? Have you done anything like that? How do you weave all of that together? The next thing that goes along with that is be yourself. I don't want to hear what you think that I want to, you, me, blah. I don't want to hear what you think I want to hear. I want to know who you are. I want to know what you want to do. I want to know what you do do. So again, two words, hobbies and interests. Also, I think your patients will appreciate this. I, I think it's intuitive that you become a scientist throughout your medical school journey. But how many of you think that all of your patients are going to be scientists? No? Head nods, hopefully, yeah. They're going to have varied interests too, and it's important that you're able to connect with them. So it's just not about the hard science. It's about everything else that truly makes you you. Also, life is about making the most of the opportunities that you're given. You're going to have doors that are opening for you all the time, but it's up for you to make sure that they stay open and actually walk through them. Uh, I was having a discussion with um, uh, someone that runs a, a political action committee, and so they oftentimes get money um, and uh, then give it to, to different candidates depending on their views. And so I was talking with uh, one of the directors of a political action committee uh, that was you know, involved with one of the medical societies. A and he said something that was extremely touching to me. He said, John, I know that you have an interest in politics. And he said, when are you going to run for office? And I looked at him with a blank face and said, I beg your pardon? And he's like, when are you going to run? And I said, I, I have no idea. But his next comment was the one that stuck with me. And he said, no one is ever going to tell you to run. And so the point is, oftentimes, someone may never tell you to apply to medical school. They may never tell you to apply where to medical school. So it's important that you make the most of the opportunities that you're given, because oftentimes you have, to, you have to be your biggest advocate. Next, follow your passions and follow your dreams. One of the things that I think is the most sad is to have my classmates that have no desire to be in medical school, but they were there because either their father or their mother was a physician, and they thought that was the path that they had to take. So it's up to you. Follow your dreams and your passions. I think that that's where you'll get them uh, the farthest. And, and I think that it's really important because that will shine through in everything that you do. 
And then finally, when you take all of those together, there's no one that can hold you back except for yourself. And I think if there's anything that you, you take from this, it's that the only person that can hold you back is you. You have all of the skills and the opportunities, but it's up for you to be able to capitalize on them. The final thing that I kind of want to talk about today is social medicine. And Rudolf Virchow has a, a number of great quotes, and, and I just want to run through them quickly. The first one is that the physician is the natural advocate of the poor. The next one, medicine is a social science, and politics is nothing but medicine on a grand scale. And then finally, medicine as a social science, as the science of human beings, has the obligation to point out problems and to attempt their theoretical solution. Now, as you guys are on your journey, and as you get into medical school, do you think that when you're learning medicine, do you think that you're learning it on the chairman of cardiology or the chief of medicine at the hospital? Or do you think that you're learning it on the ED, on the patient that's intoxicated, that may have just been in a drunk driving accident and now needs care? It's been my experience that I haven't learned my medicine from the chair of medicine of the hospital when he's in the hospital. It's been from the patients that haven't had the insurance, that no one wants to take care of. That's who I've learned the medicine from, and I think it's important that you recognize that and that we advocate for those people. So, why is AMSA so special to me? Why is it special enough to take a, a year off of school and, and to do this? And really, it goes back to the first thing that I said. Every once in a great while, you'll have an opportunity that will affect the number and types of experiences you'll have for the rest of your life. And without a doubt, AMSA has been the thing for me that's affected the number and types of experiences. Given my background with my father having passed away when I was little, uh, this was really the place where I found my home that expanded the number and types of experiences. So, what's the AMSA advantage? Again, two words. The first one is growth and leadership. People often say, how do you grow as a leader? And my answer to this is that you have to be able to get out of your comfort zone. If you only do things that you're comfortable with, it's impossible to grow. Uh, I'm a big fan of Malcolm Gladwell, and there have been many uh, books on the subject. Uh, Talent is overrated as one. Uh, but it talks about dedicated practice, and that oftentimes to become good at anything, it takes 10,000 hours to become good at it. And so I, I think that that's important. In order to become a good leader, it takes 10,000 hours. Now, I'm not very good at math, so let's pretend that there are 25 hours in a day. Right? So if there are 25 hours in a day, and when you do nothing for those 25 hours, for four days, that's 100 hours, right? So take that times 100, and in order to become good at something, 400 days. That's all you would do for 400 days is what it takes to become really, truly good at something. And so I think that, I mean, you need to be able to practice these things, and AMSA has really provided me the opportunity to be able to practice my leadership. Next, it's provided for me mentorship and friendship. Uh, some of my best friends have come from, from AMSA, and, and it's provided me great mentorship. Uh, the story that I always love to tell is that uh, I was on a, a bus to lobby day, and I was sitting next to someone that had gone to Case Western, and he was in AMSA, and we started talking about where I wanted to go to medical school. And I was telling him, and, I, and I'm applying to Case Western also. And so he, he started to ask me more questions about myself, what were my interests, my hobbies, my passions, all of the things that I've kind of talked about before this. And he said, you know what, let me make a phone call. And so then two weeks later, I found out that I, uh, I had an interview at Case Western and, you know, called him back and said, thanks for all the hard work, and he gave me more pointers and more tips. And I definitely attribute um, being in AMSA and the help that he gave me to, to getting into to AMSA. And that flows right into the next point, connections and community. I think that we're always looking to be a part of something that's bigger than us. And for me, AMSA has definitely done that. And finally, it's allowed me to pursue my passion and my dreams. And so what are those? I have an interest in health policy, in humanitarian medicine and in medical education, in leadership and mentorship, and as a hopeful future urologist, an interest in prostates. So what are the types of things that, that AMSA members do? They become all of these. It's not just being about being a student or being a doctor. There, there's so much more to that. And, and if there's anything that you've taken from uh, this, this weekend, there, there are so many opportunities available to you, um, both during your uh, medical school path and after you've graduated. And so finally, what can AMSA do for you? One is the networking and access. And I know it's cliche, but I think it's worth saying. It's not what you know, but it's really who you know. What else can it do? It offers practical experience. I mean, come on, I'm speaking to an auditorium full of people. I think that's pretty awesome. 
The third thing is simple awareness. If you want two words, simple awareness. Uh, the, you're, no matter what, if you think about it, what's big right now in healthcare? Healthcare reform. Uh, if you go to any interview, I can almost guarantee that you're going to be asked something about healthcare reform. And so just to be able to have the, the simple awareness it is a big thing. Finally, two words, professional badass. So I'll end. I have two words for you, and those are join AMSA. Uh, if we're, we were on the quad yesterday. I think we'll be there today. Uh, the link is www.amsa.org backslash welcome premeds. And for this weekend alone, it's uh, $50 to join with uh, the AMSA ARC code. Uh, I know that you guys were told yesterday someone came up and said it was one of the best things that they ever did. Uh, I joined when I was a, a freshman in college, and uh, I, I couldn't agree more. It was one of the best decisions I made. I'll put in two plugs. We have our national convention that's coming up in uh, Washington, D.C. in March. Uh, and if you want to talk about anything more that we talked about here today, um, we'll be running a session this afternoon. Uh, it's in Wellman 103, uh, and we'll be doing the same thing at 1, 2, 3, and at 4. So if you guys are interested in, in talking uh, more about this, if you're interested in talking more about AMSA, uh, we have some, some other na national leaders that are here. Uh, one of them sits on the admissions committee at the, the University of Pittsburgh. So if you're more interested in that, come and, come and pick our brains. But we'll be there all afternoon in Wellman 103. Uh, thank you guys for listening. It's been a fantastic experience.